Welcome to The Gathering Point. So glad that you have joined us. Thank you for following us along in the teachings that we have so far. Uh, we have been enjoying this lesson. We are really talking about, and in, 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 in this series that we're with you, this, this segment is about Christ being formed in you. And today we're going to focus on formation. Today we're going to focus on formation. If you think this teaching series can be a benefit to others, uh, feel free to pass it on and uh, and we appreciate your feedback at the same time. OK, let's have a word of prayer and move forward. Father, we thank you in the name of your son, Jesus. <laughs> we thank you. In the name of your son, Jesus. Wow. We thank you. In the name of your son, Jesus, that you have made us heirs, joint heirs, laborers and co-laborers, sons and daughters of your kingdom. And you did this through the person of Jesus Christ. And now the work of the Holy Spirit is upon us. And he is taking your written word and breathing revelation knowledge into our hearts and souls. And that work, that word is finishing the work that you have started in us. Thank you, Lord, for your graciousness. Now, Father, open our ears that we might hear, open our eyes that we might see, let our hearts be flooded with revelation knowledge that we might be established that you would be glorified and we, your people, would be edified. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Whew. It's going to be a good teaching today. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm forging an acronym. <laughs> this, part of it works, but the problem with acronyms sometimes, you have to force a letter, and I'll come to that in just a little bit. We are talking about formation today. Formation is so important. Uh, this is the, this portion of our walk. We're going to go to Genesis 28 and we're going to study Genesis 28 through 32. We're highlighting it. I'll encourage you to read it. We have covered Galatians 419, Christ being formed in us. We've covered Philippians 1 through 11. He who has begun a good work in you will finish it until the day of Jesus Christ. He will not give up on us. He is he. The Holy Spirit has been sent to carry out the mandate of the Father God who has been provided through us through the person of Jesus Christ. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> Just so we are in this place of formation and I'm, I'm using the word place because, as I heard one preacher say, place matters. But what happens in place, what happens when we get in place is that place and I'm going to now go back to this dear sister who's a part of our church group. She says, holiness takes time. Holiness takes time. Now, I realize and you should realize if you have received Jesus Christ as your personal savior, that you are saved, you are born again. So what we're talking about in this series is not about your eternal salvation, but what we are talking about is your walk of faith being established, not being tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine, but to be established and affected, to be a blessing. This is really what we're heading towards. And every believer is called to be a blessing in this life. And we're going to talk about what that means to be a blessing. But this place of formation gets us to this. Um, I, I would liken it into the New Testament uh, series of faith and works, how faith and works go together. Blessings, responsibility and blessings go together. And formation is where God begins to shape us in an environment, in an imperfect, he, he shapes us perfectly in an imperfect environment. Let me say it one more time. He shapes us 
perfectly according to his image, in his likeness, in an imperfect environment. In other words, the situations outside of us and even the circumstances in which we're being developed are going to look questionable, but they are never questionable in the, the life of Jesus Christ. They're never questionable in the mind, I should, I should say, in the mind of God and in the mind of Jesus Christ, nor is it questionable in, is in his representative in the earth, the Holy Spirit, who is our teacher. Never a doubt. The way I like to put it is God never flinches about his determination to have us established in the faith. But it does require us to go through the formation process. Now, don't confuse, again, being born again, naming the name of Jesus, and going to heaven, having heaven as your home, and, and being named after him with what we're talking about now. Now we're talking about going on to maturity, right? This is, the, uh, this is about being established. To be effective in, in our faith, we have to be established in certain things. So we're going to talk about we're going to talk, we're going to, the acronym PLACE and formation. Remember, we've already talked about Galatians 4.19. We've already talked about it, uh, that how Paul says, I'm travailing in birth until Christ being formed in you. We talked about Philippians 1, uh, 1 through 11, but I'm going to highlight just verse 6 of that, where he says in verse 6, he says that he who has begun a good work in you will finish it until the day of his coming. Mm-mm. God will never, I, I want you to just remember this, in his formation process, and his forming us, he will never flinch about the finished work that he wants. He never questions what it is that he's going to do in you and me. I don't care where we are. I don't care if you're on the highest of high or the lowest of low. He says, my plan is still to bless you, to use you, to cause you. Now, let me, let me rephrase what I just said, to be cause you to be a blessing. And we're going to look at this in the life of Jacob and Esau and what we dis discussed the last time we were here. And again, I'm just going to point you back to that teaching is the difference between Esau and Jacob and that Esau was a man of the now and he, he did not have that long term vision as was in Jacob's life. And Jacob was in pursuit of something. And we're going to look at Jacob's life now. It's this formation process in Jacob's life, this formation process in Jacob's life took 20 years. It took 20 years in a questionable, <laughs> using a questionable individual. I'm going to use this marker here. I probably made it worse. 20 years. All right. 20 years to establish something in his life. Now, I, I, now we, we can hardly do 20 weeks, two weeks, and I'm gonna, if I, as a part of this teaching, I'm gonna integrate the testimony of a young man who um, went through a formation process, was undergoing, he still is, but this, this 16, this year and a half formation process that he went through, most of us would not stomach very much. And I introduced that conversation the last time. So formation. So here we are. We're going to use this word. So there's a couple of things I want to, I want to point out to you as we are talking about the acronym. The acronym present, the acronym P or uh, on the place, we're going to use the word P and we're going to use the word presence here. And the reason we're going to use the word presence is that presence brings about Presence brings about awareness. Presence brings about awareness. And then the second piece we're going to talk to, to you about is we're going to talk to you about what it means to the learning process, the following process. And that following process is a, is a process of submission and which leads us to an assignment or assigned to serve, an assignment, assign, you're assigned to serve. That's a humility element that God teaches us. And then contending to restore. You sometimes have to contend for relationship, contend. You'll see this in the life of Jacob. And then earnestness. This is about our diligence. And, and these are things that are really critical. So Genesis 28, go to Genesis 28, verse 13, which this is a, this is where Jacob came into the presence of God, but he was unaware. 
Genesis 28, verse 13. Genesis 28, verse 13 from the New Living Translation. He says, and at the top of the stairway stood the Lord. And he said, I am the Lord, the God of your grandfather. Now, this is Jacob. He is remember from our, our last weeks, he had to leave home. He had to leave home because his brother had said that as soon as his father died and his father was nearing death, that he was going to take revenge against him because of both a birthright, which he sold, and a blessing, which Jacob um, um, stole. <laughs> That's the only way to put it, right? But the blessing and the birthright went together, as you understood in that, in that deal. They were both, they, he just decided both of them were his. <laughs> anyway, I don't want to get sidetracked there. Just go listen to that lesson again. But here he goes. He says, I am the Lord, the God of your grandfather, Abraham, and the God of your father, Isaac. Remember, he just left Isaac. And the ground, he was now heading towards his uncle Laban's um, 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 uh, home. Uncle Laban was the sister of his mother. And so now he's being sent there to both uh, find a family, find, find a wife, and then to, for safety reasons, and to also to find a covenant, to get, to find someone that he could be in a covenant relationship with. And, and, and that happened. So here he says, he says, and the ground that you're on, he's in this in-between place, but this in-between place is just not an in-between place. It is an appointed place. He says, the ground that you are ly lying on belongs to you. Jacob wasn't even aware of it. He wasn't even aware. He just thought that he was in a resting place and he did not realize that the ground that he was on belongs to him. He says, I am giving it to you and your descendants. Now, understand this. He says, I am the God of your grandfather, Abraham. How is that? Abraham is your grand. Abraham was Esau's grandfather. Just a difference there. Abraham was Esau's grandfather. And no one, so sometimes you're so close to something, you don't realize the importance of what it all means. He says, I am the God of your grandfather, Abraham. I am the God of your father, Isaac. And you know, God was going to identify, this is the last time he identified as the God of somebody. You know, I know he's our God, but I mean by scriptural reference, no one else, uh, uh, could tag this on. He was a God of Abraham, Isaac, and, and this man now who was, as we will find out as he's in this place, was completely unaware. Why? Because awareness. Up until this point, everybody had told him what was going to happen, right? He, he contended for the birthright from his brother Esau. He um, stole the blessing. Uh, from his father. And then his father essentially blessed him, right? He essentially blessed him. But he still had not had this direct conversation, a direct interaction, a personal uh, interaction with God. And it was in this place that he was just lying down that God began to deal directly with him. See, there is nothing more important than you and I having a personal witness of God speaking to us, a personal witness of God speaking to us. And it was at this place that he had. So Abraham was known for the seed and, and for believing God. And it was accounted to him for faith. He was a father of faith. That's what Abraham was known for. Isaac was known for reopening wells, places of contention. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> reopening wells. There are wells that God has caused us to establish. Some of us are called to establish wells in the land. And then Jacob didn't know it yet. It was in his nature to contend for the fate. Jacob was called to contend for the fate, not personally for him. As I said in my last lesson, sometimes we understand, we misunderstand that contending for fate is about what's going to happen, what we can get for us. But contending for the fate is what we can be a blessing to others. When we contend to be a blessing for others, oh, my Lord, are we in the better portion of that. So but he lacked awareness. And see, this is the this is the place. So if we go to. Um, 
uh, let's see if I can, if, if I'll, I'll, let's, let's find this 13th verse because I want to read a little bit further uh, as, we, as we get closer to the scripture. So Genesis 28, 13, he says, he said, and then verse 14, he says, your descendants will be numerous as the dust of the earth. They will spread out all, in all directions to the west and to the east, to the north and to the south. And all the families of the earth will be blessed. All the fam- the note, note this, all the families of the earth will be blessed. All the families. They will spread out. Your families will spread out from the east, the north, and the south. The west, the east, the north, and the south. And as the same with that part of that same verse, and all of and all of the families of the earth will be blessed through you and your descendants. It's a continuation of the Abraham of Abraham's blessings. It was a continuation of what God had said to Abraham. He says, I'm going to continue that through you. And so he goes on to say here, he says that, and I will protect you. Let's say 15 verse. What more I am with you, I will protect you. And wherever you go, one day I will bring you back to this land right here where you're lying. And he says, I will not leave you. As you guys know, this is one of my favorite Old Testament scriptures. I will not leave you until I have finished giving you everything that I have promised you. Until I have finished, until I've given you everything. Now, there is a, there is a New Testament parallel to this because this is you are sometimes in the middle of the presence of God and you just don't understand the greatness of it. You just don't grasp it. It's it, awareness is, is, is a is a powerful thing. And and many times we get so used to being a, in a certain place that it dulls our sensitivity to what is actually happening. Uh, this is how people become prejudiced. This is how we can become, uh, we can use word. There, <laughs> I'm laughing because I'm thinking of, of uh, some brothers that uh, young, young men that we are reaching out to and they are looking for answers. And, and one of the things that um, the, the, the young men brought to our attention is that, and it wasn't new to me because we, we've seen it before. It says, man, he says, I, I just, I, I'm cussing and I don't even know I'm cussing. It's just, it just comes up out of me. See, he, he wasn't even aware of the curse words coming up out of him. He was just expressing himself. It was just another word. It was an and, but, wow, <laughs> to him kind of comment. It didn't, it didn't appear to him as if he was saying, you know, letting certain bombs fly here and there. And, but we've seen this time and time again. I've seen it in my own life. Things that I used to say, I wasn't aware of things that I was saying. My mom used to bring it to my attention. Well, you don't say that in front of me. Don't, don't talk like that. You didn't learn to talk like that here. I didn't. I learned to talk like that when I was out hanging out with my other friends. And so when I tried to import that into the uh, Gladys Andrews household, uh, she made it no uncertain terms that that was not going to be the way I communicated to her. Right. So I had to I had to. And when I became saved, I became more acutely aware of of what was proper language. And finally, it just it, it went away. Right. Because I adopted something new. I'm, I'm sidetracked. Awareness is a powerful thing. And when we lose awareness, think about the way you and I respond to someone. Uh, think about how uh, certain things set us off. This is all a part of awareness and but there's a holy awareness right there's a, there's a holy awareness uh if you go to uh i'm just going to take us over too quickly to luke uh the fifth chapter and this is this is simon uh peter fishing this is when jesus says, i'm taking to your new testament uh parallel now to jesus calling the disciples now this is god calling jacob we just read what god was calling jacob formation we're in the present side of this Presence is so important and awareness of him. And, and, and watch this in the New Testament. I, I'm, I'm mid, midstream in Genesis 28, but I want to take this to Luke, the fifth chapter. But Simon uh, answered, this is Jesus had, uh, Jesus had walked along. Luke gives us a fuller definition of what happens here. So Jesus was walking along, not haphazardly, intentionally, <laughs> I might add. God shows up in your life, not haphazardly. 
he's intentionally looking. He finds you right where you are. And he found um, Peter and his brother right where he was. <laughs> Luke 5, verse 5. After he had preached, he, he, had, he came along, he saw several ships, and he picked up one of the boats, and that boat that he picked out happened to be Simon Peter's boat. Talking about prayerness and awareness. So he, he asked Peter if he could use his boat, and he, in a, in a more declarative statement, got into the boat, pushed it out, and then he began to preach. Well, Peter's washing his net, and they're putting away their nets, and I'm sure he's listening. Now, Andrew, Peter's brother, already knew about Jesus because he had been a disciple of John the Baptist. But they were both going about their daily work. This was their business. So Jesus got in their business, and he preached the gospel from their business. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to draw some things here together. God intentionally wants to be involved right where you are so he can do the following thing. So Jesus, after he had finished, he told them, they had, he said, uh, now they had just, they're mending their nets and getting ready for whatever the next fishing day was going to be, a fishing night was going to be, uh, because that's uh, in, in biblical times, that's, that's the timing in which they did this. And so he, he told them, he says, um, I want you to push out your boat and, and, and cast your nets out again into the deep. Simon answered and said, this is the fifth verse of the fifth chapter, New, uh, New King James Version this time. Uh, Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. You know, I, I imagine, you know what it's like to work hard and your paycheck falls short. And Jesus turns around and say, Let's go out and do it again. You're not encouraged to do it again. But something was going on through the hearing of the gospel. See, this is why even when you don't think you need to hear the gospel, you need to hear the gospel. Even when you don't need, you think you don't need to hear me telling you about awareness and presence. You need to hear awareness and presence because the Holy Spirit is trying to talk to you and me. All right. He says, nevertheless, at your word, something transpired. He got encouraged. I'm, I'm, he got encouraged because of something that he heard in that, in that exchange that Jesus had. And it didn't even say Jesus was preaching to him, but I got a feeling that Jesus was preaching. <laughs> he, was, he was preaching to him. He says, I will let down the net. I'm not going to get hung up on nets and nets. All right. Sixth verse. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish and their net was breaking. Now watch this. So seven verse, this is the fifth chapter, seven verse. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and to help them. And they came and they filled both the boats so that they began to sink. This was an overwhelming blessing. He had only had allowed Jesus to use his boat forever how long Jesus preached, but my goodness, <laughs> if, he, if Jesus preached two or three hours out of his boat, that was more than they caught all night because they caught nothing. He said, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Now, just two hours on the other side of being, a, 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 whatever number of time frame it was, on the other side of encountering Jesus, their boats are sinking with where they had nothing in it beforehand. There's so much in here that we can meditate on. You should go and just meditate on this passage of script because here is what bring, uh, here is what, this, it wasn't just fish. Something else happened. Watch this. The boats begin to sink in verse eight. Listen to what Simon says. See, this is, this is when you know you've encountered. <laughs> Let me just read it. When Simon Peter saw it, he saw the overwhelming blessing. Must have been something they'd never seen before. Had they ever fished where the, where the boats were overflowing? <laughs> you know, had they, had, had they ever, they knew that this was something that they had, they had never encountered this before. His boat was sinking. 
His partner's boats were sinking. Everybody's boats were sinking <laughs> because there was more than enough. G so Simon Peter, Simon Peter said this. He, he, he says, hold on a sec. I, I, I'm resetting myself here. He says to him, he falls down at Jesus' knees. He, he falls down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. <sighs> it brings an awareness of, hold on a sec. It brings us awareness of who we are. It brings an awareness of who we are. It brings an awareness of who we are. When we're in his, when we're in, this is Luke 5, and I'm reading like 5 through verse 8. So you can go read this. Luke 5 through verse 8, right? We, we read Genesis 28. Right. But here, the New Testament parallel, it brings us an awareness of who we are. Let me tell you, it tells us also it, it tells us who we are. Who we're not. <laughs> yes, it does. It brings us an awareness of who we are, but it also brings us an awareness of who we're not. You know, the average person that if this had just been a talented Jesus who knew something about fishing, they would say, man, can we hire you? You want to come work for us? <laughs> no, no, it is. They just caught a. Let's just follow that train of thought just for a moment. You want to come work for us, Jesus? I mean, we can give you we, we, we'll cut you a deal. We'll cut you in on us. Now, why would Jesus want to work for somebody who didn't catch anything the day before? <laughs> you know. I went in, when I interviewed for my job after being laid off for after being fired, literally for being fired and then having to go find work. I didn't walk into the company and say, y'all want to work for me. I was looking for a job for them. Right. I was looking for a job from them. OK, so I didn't go in. So it lets you know who we are. But it also affirms who we're not. Now, here's two things. Many times we know what we're not. It is God who has a perfect example of who we are. So he says in this, he says, Jesus, he says, then look, the guy who just had, he, he just, why after getting the, 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 the part from me, the part from me, why after getting the most, the, the most powerful, strongest, overwhelming blessing that you've ever had. Now you're telling a person to leave because the person of Jesus, the person of Jesus pointed out these two things very clearly. And he said, I know I am a sinner. I am a sinner. I don't deserve, note this, I don't deserve to be in your presence. This is the holiness of God. The person of Jesus manifested by catching fish, but I think it was a word, that, it was that word he heard earlier was now working in his life. He says, Lord, I don't deserve to see there is both humility. We're going to get into this as we as we get into the other segments of our teaching. There's a humility at work here. And there is a hunger at work here, even though he's saying, Lord, depart from me. I am a sinful. I am a sinful man. I am a sinful man. Oh, Lord. Now. The O Lord parts here says, the O Lord, 
This word here, as you very well know, means that you are owner. You are owner. You're the boss. I don't deserve to be around you. I'm not worthy to be around you. Remember Cornelius? So Lord, I'm not the centurion. He says, I'm not worthy. They were both. But let me just go on. The centurion said, Lord, I'm not worthy that you should come into my household. Just speak the word only. Who was Jesus? <laughs> you got to think about this. Jesus was in the boat with him, sinking. <laughs> he was in the boat with him. He was in the boat with him. The boat is just near sinking depth. Water's getting ready to come over and lap into it. The guys are trying to, imagine that scene. Guys are trying to pull fish into the boat. And then you see Jesus and Peter having this conversation. Peter, Lord, depart from me. For I am a sinful man. I am a sinful man, oh Lord. Now, I want you to understand, and I hate leaving us here because we're right up against this, our, our, our teasing chest in the day. But Jesus said, and this is what formation does, a presence and awareness does. He says, I'm going to, I'm going to, you're going to do this next step that leads us perfectly to the next place. <laughs> we'll pick this up when Jesus, we, we, I know we're in the boat, right? Just like we're leaving Jacob encountering God in a place that he wasn't aware of. And now he went from being unaware to being aware. He went from being unaware to being aware. Now, up until this point in time, Andrew had met Jesus, or at least if we can piece everything together, Jesus was not an unknown because John kept pointing everyone to him. And now he was beginning to manifest himself. He's calling disciples but now the awareness of his holiness. This is, this is the piece that I want, I, I, I'm, I, we're landing at. We're understanding his holiness is beginning to impact life. See, as much as we want, to, here's a piece that I, I want us to, to really take away from today's lesson. We're just on the P part. <laughs> I, I hope we'll go fast in this on the others. But we're on a peep, the part of awareness. They didn't try to hire Jesus as a partner. They said, Lord, you're too holy for us. I'm too sinful and you're too good. And Jesus says, I'm good. But there is no sin in your life. There is no nothing that you have done that I won't handle and clean, cleanse you from. Right? Think about that. There's nothing that you have done that his holiness and his righteousness will not remedy. <laughs> Man, I love this. This was good news for Rick Andrews. This was good news. This was called redemption. This was called his, his, being, his, his, his staying with me in this formation process. To recognize who we are and who we're not. And what Jesus said to him, he says, from here on out, I'm, I'm spoiler alert, you already know this passage, I'm going to teach you how to catch men. <laughs> from here on out, I'm going to teach you how to catch men. I'm going to cleanse you from, that, from, that, from being this, this vile sinner. I'm going to cleanse you from being this vile sinner to being a co-laborer and a joint heir with me. And matter of fact, Peter, upon the truth that you will know about me, I will build my church. I will give you the keys of the kingdom. <laughs> this is the good news of the gospel. Now, if you're dealing with a behavior that is not a part of the kingdom principle. If you've not surrendered, if your awareness, if you don't have proper awareness in your life of who he is, the Holy Spirit has been there alongside you because that's his assignment. 
If you're not saved, he's been alongside you. And he wants to dwell on the inside of you to begin to f- do the work that he's assigned to do for your specific purpose because he wants you to become a part of the kingdom. If you are saved, then he wants you to reacquaint himself. I love what one brother said. Your behavior sometimes will cause God to have to sit at a separate table because that's grief. You do not, the Holy Spirit, to sit at a separate table because we grieve him because of our behavior. Repent. Repent, confess, acknowledge, receive his forgiveness, and you will be in fellowship with him again. Let me say it again. Repent. Say, Lord, I'm going the wrong way. This is not the way you want me to go. Would you forgive me for my conduct? Forgive me for the sin that I have committed. And I receive your forgiveness, Lord God. And I purpose to walk with you. Holy Spirit, I want to partner with you because you've been sent here by God the Father. So in the name of Jesus, I join in this fellowship. Amen. Those are simple steps that you can take to regain your relationship with him. But it requires us, it requires us, excuse me, to turn awareness. It is powerful. Powerful in our work relationship. Powerful in our relationship with him. Amen. So good having you guys here this week. We're going to pursue learning. Maybe we'll do learning and assignment because they work close together in our next teaching series. God bless and thank you for joining us this week in our teaching series.